Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Madison Lawson, and I am the Regional Trade Manager for the Tampa Bay area for Enterprise Florida. And thank you so much for joining us for our third webinar in our Trade Around the World a monthly webinar series. Um, as you know, today we'll be speaking with our Enterprise Florida Canada office. Before we get started, we do have a quick clip for you from our Senior Vice President of the International Department here at Enterprise Florida, uh, TJ VML. So could you play that video for me, please, Lynn? Greetings, my name is TJ Villamil and I'm the Senior Vice President of International Trade and Development here at Enterprise Florida. Thank you for joining us on our monthly Trade Around the World webinar series. Here at Enterprise Florida, we serve our state's exporters through various trade programs, grants, and connections around the world. With over 20 international offices we, and access to 100, over 100 world markets, we want to provide our small businesses with relevant information and assistance when exporting to, to markets all around the world. We hope you add this webinar series as a resource to your toolkit of doing business abroad and take away some of the best practices when approaching new distributors or clientele in a particular country or region. I would encourage you to think of a few questions to ask at the end of our webinar and touch base with our regional trade managers and international offices at the end of this segment. They will be happy to serve you and your business through our trade programs. Because when you win, we win here at Enterprise Florida. So our goals are completely aligned. We know international trade is big business here in the Sunshine State, and we want to ensure the best opportunities are available and accessible to you all to make sure that we help our small to medium-sized Florida companies grow. Let's get your products and services around the world. All right, great. Thanks for that video. Alrighty, so a few housekeeping items before we get started. This video will be recorded. Um, it will be recorded and posted on our florida-expert.com website as well as Enterprise Florida's YouTube page. All attendees are muted and cameras are off. So if you do have a question or a comment, please use our Q&A box for questions and our chat box for any comments. We would love to hear uh, where you are in the state of Florida or what industry you're representing today. So before I hand it over to our Canada office, I will just say, what are we doing? Why Enterprise Florida? So Enterprise Florida is the state economic development organization. We are chaired by Florida's governor um, and we are led by Florida's secretary of commerce. So we work through a statewide network of partnerships with your local economic development organizations. And kind of how we work is to recruit new business into the state as well as support our existing businesses through expert assistance as well as retention assistance. Um, and our goal is to add new high wage valued jobs to the state. Now, how do we do that internationally? So we have a team of international offices overseas. They work to recruit foreign direct investment into the state, new businesses here, as well as helping our current um, industries grow by helping them export overseas. Um, this is a map you'll see here where we have many, many different offices where we are representing the great state of Florida. So today I'm going to hand it over to um, Hissam Oriaband, our director of the EFI Canada office to give you a lovely presentation on Canada. And just a quick reminder, please put your Q and A's uh, or your questions in the Q and A box at any time during the webinar. We will save plenty of time for them at the end. Go ahead, Hissam. Hassam, we can't hear you. Could you try muting and then unmuting again? Did that work? Yes. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> My apologies, everyone. No uh, thank you, Madison. Um, so again, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your participation. Um, again, it, it's... Uh, it's not a big wonder why Canada, um, obviously Canada is um, US's um, biggest trading partner. Uh, and that actually goes for Florida as well. Um, this is, um, you know, Canada is, is a robust economy. Um, Canada is actually the second top destination for uh, Florida origin exports, um, as well as being the third largest uh, importer partner um, for uh, Florida. So uh, as you can see, um, population wise um it's uh roughly about half of uh, florida's population um the only caveat is um given canada's vastness 
the major population pockets are centered around the East Coast and the West Coast uh, in the uh, great metropolitan areas of Toronto, uh, Montreal, as well as Vancouver. Um, again, you can see the numbers given uh, the pandemic, um, you know, we, we saw a dip in uh, Canada does uh, GDP to uh, minus 5.2% in 2020. Um, and then we saw a great rebound um, after that. So um, Canada's GDP grew by approximately 1.6% in the fourth quarter of 2021. Um, and the latest number that I saw um, as of February of 2022, um, there was a growth of 1.4%. Uh, so uh, this is, again, it, it's a testament to uh, the, the robustness of the Canadian economy, um, the utilization of the different industry sectors, manufacturing, etc., which we will go over. Um, and um, one key factor is uh, the fact that Canada has um, so many uh, free trade agreements with uh, great partners such as uh, the United States, um, and we'll, we'll discuss some of those. Um, so again, as you can see here, um, this is um, Canada's imports um, categorized by country. Again, uh, United States top of the list, European Union, as I mentioned, we have those, um, Canada has those free trade agreements. Um, so specifically with regards to the European Union, Canada has the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, specifically for uh, the mainland EU. Um, apart from that, um, Canada has initiated the Canada-UK Trade Continuity Agreement. Um, and on top of that, there's uh, several other uh, free trade agreements that um, Canada has signed with key partners uh, to make sure uh, that the, uh, the flow of, of labor and goods um, continues through uh, its borders. Um, sorry, I, I forgot to change the slide, my my, uh, my mistake. Um, again, um, as you can see here, um, again, uh, we've had a lot of com companies um, uh, in the US come to Canada, uh, set up shop uh, just to utilize these free trade agreements, uh, especially with regards to uh, the EU, UK, etc. Um, and then you, as you go further down the list, uh, the numbers shrink. But again, it, it's not um, to say that these uh, trade agreements are, are less important than the other ones. Um, the good thing between US and Canada is the uh, the new NAFTA, the, um, as, as they call it in Canada, KUSMA, or the uh, USMCA. Um, so again, it, it, it reduces a lot of the barriers that uh, US companies would face um, coming into a uh, an international market such as Canada, um, with the recent improvements in uh, USMCA, uh, a lot of uh, US companies gained more access into the dairy industry in Canada, um, where they can at least compete a little bit more on a playing field with Canadian companies. Next slide. I, I love this slide. Uh, it's a little bit busy, um, but don't worry. Uh, the slides will be shared with you. The recordings will be shared with you. Um, but um, if you actually squint and zoom in, you can see some of the main um, industry sectors and subsectors um, that um, are being imported uh, by Canada. Um, again, uh, top imports for Canada as it stands are um, vehicles at about roughly $21 uh, billion. Um, right after that is vehicle parts, uh, delivery trucks, um, anything that has to do with broadcasting equipment, um, uh, gold, um, other uh, sort of uh, precious metals. Um, and most of these are, are actually coming from the US um, with uh, almost about $218 billion in uh, worth of goods. Um, right after that is uh, China, um, and then uh, Mexico and Germany. Um, but again, this this uh, this slide is is great because you can see uh, not only the main industry sectors, but the supply chain around some of these main industry sectors uh, that are coming into uh, Canada as as imports, where it 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 basically presents investment and trade opportunities, um, especially for, for Floridian companies, um, such as uh, refined petroleum, which is, that's, that's one of the um, exports uh, from Florida to, to Canada. Um, same uh, goes for medical devices, um, a lot of agricultural products, uh, obviously. Um, so, and again, you know, please don't, you know, you will be shared um, these slides so you can actually take a, a closer look at uh, some of these uh, numbers. 
Um, again, uh, just a, a, a reminder of the um, the level of, of uh, imports, um, at least from the Canadian side um, and some of its uh, import partners. Um, as you can see, um, US is, is mainly top of the chart, um, China as well. Um, again, uh, this is why Canada is putting so much emphasis on, on putting together these free trade agreements with, uh, for example, with the UK, uh, especially given the, uh, the Brexit issue. Um, so Canada felt that it could actually serve Canadian um, uh, market better by entering into um, a free trade agreement directly with the UK um, and having its own um, agreement with the European Union on the side. Now, um, this is, um, and again, this comes from uh, Statistics Canada, um, where uh, you can see uh, Florida exports to Canada by uh, main industry sectors. Again, as I mentioned, agriculture, um, chemicals, such as uh, refined petrochemical uh, products, uh, equipment and machinery, um, anything that has to do with minerals, metals, uh, plastics, composites, um, and then uh, transportation and, and uh, services. Um, so again, this is this is important. And then the next slide is also as important because it goes into the subsectors of what's actually being uh, exported uh, under these main uh, industry categories to uh, Canada. So again, as you can see, uh, fertilizers, uh, a lot of, uh, as I mentioned, vegetables, fresh produce. Um, Canadians actually uh, import a lot of their fresh produce, uh, citrus, et cetera, from, uh, from Florida. Um, and then you keep going down the line um, to uh, some of the other main uh, components, uh, such as plastics, as I mentioned, uh, anything that has to do with cosmetics, um, medical devices, um, and then uh, ships and, and, and uh, et cetera. Um, what I wanted to uh, also discuss is um, opportunities for these main industry sectors for Floridian companies, um, both on, in terms of investment and uh, in terms of uh, trade. And and some of the these are these are basically the main industry sectors that um, are prevalent um, in Canada with uh, strong, robust infrastructure in aerospace, uh, automotive manufacturing, uh, and we'll go um, one by one. I'll, I'll discuss in detail um, where um, each um, industry and its uh, sub-industries represent, life sciences, and lastly, um, anything that's iTech, uh, information technology. So let's, um, let's start with uh, aerospace. Um, again, uh, I'm, I'm sure most of you know, um, given uh, the uh, presence of Bombardier and some of the other uh, major um, aerospace companies in Canada, um, it actually has one of the largest aerospace industries in the world, um, right next to uh, US and, and France. Um, so the, the Canadian aerospace industry actually contributed over about $22 billion in GDP. Um, and the industry itself, uh, not including the subsectors and, and the supply chain, um, employed about 207,000 Canadian jobs. Um, and that, that's a great number. Again, um, the R&D factor is an important uh, uh, contact to, 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 uh, to mention as well um, with regards to um, Canadian manufacturing um, in the aerospace sector. Um, in comparison to global civil aircraft production, uh, for example, Canada's aerospace manufacturing uh, revenue uh, were less impacted in 2020 in the midst of the, uh, the pandemic. Um, and then between 2019 and 2020, um, the overall uh, aerospace industry contribution to Canadian economy um, did decrease by about um, $6.2 billion. Um, but again, it's it's picking itself up, um, and a lot of the um, uh, you know the aircraft and, and parts manufacturing um, and then MRO um, are contributing to that uh, to that success. Um, so again, as you can see here with, the, with regards to the numbers in 2020, um, Canada imported uh, almost about four billion dollars in aircraft aircraft parts, um, and that made it uh, you know the fourth largest importer of of these types of uh, uh, equipment. So this sort of gives you a, a breakdown of, of where this um, aerospace infrastructure 
this manufacturing occurs um, in Canada. Um, so the, the main um, important provinces uh, would be Ontario and Quebec, as you can see, where uh, the bulk of those um, aero structures, those uh, aircraft um, commercial and, and, and business aircraft are, are being produced. Um, and uh, over 50% of Canada's air manufacturing occurs in, in Quebec, uh, with another 30% uh, in Ontario. Um, and then the rest is uh, about 40% MRO activity uh, in Western Canada, um, such as uh, British Columbia province. Um, there are uh, smaller provinces that do partake in, in this uh, general aerospace uh, manufacturing, um, such as the Atlantic provinces. Um, again, compared to the, uh, the, the two biggest provinces of uh, Ontario and Quebec, it's smaller in size, but nevertheless, uh, still important. So, again, um, the, uh, the, the export opportunities are uh, abundant in this sector. Um, there's a, a lot of um, business and investment opportunity as well as, as trade uh, for uh, Floridian companies, um, such as engine parts and components, uh, composites, um, anything that has to do with uh, manufacturing and, and um, uh, 4.0 processes. Um, Parts, um, obviously, again, um, in terms of uh, satellites, uh, uh, UAV um, uh, production, um, and then uh, general defense uh, uh, and, and infrared uh, systems. Um, I, I wanted to highlight two main important um, shows which take place here in Canada. Um, Aero Montreal, which takes place in, in Montreal um, uh, every two years, um, and then the Canadian Aerospace Summit. So uh, both are attended by uh, major OEMs, uh, major manufacturers in both the um, civilian and then defense um, aerospace parts. Um, and they're, they're both great uh, venues for uh, companies to meet Canadian counterparts, to meet the supply chain chain around the aerospace to meet some of the government uh, decision makers um, in the aerospace industry in Canada. So, um, and we'll go into some of the services that uh, EFI provides, um, but these, these two are, are the main important um, trade shows to attend, at least um, in the Canadian uh, market. Um, the next sector is uh, automotive. Um, again, it's, uh, it's, a, a big sector. Uh, it does employ uh, roughly 120,000 people. Um, and uh, again, it's sort of centered around the uh, Ontario province, uh, which borders the Great Lakes regions uh, where uh, the North American um, automotive manufacturing uh, is sort of clustered around. Um, there's a lot of um, OEMs having um, their own production facilities here in, um, in Canada. Um, the one important aspect of the Canadian automotive sector is that uh, there's a big shift towards EVs. Um, and uh, just recently, um, a uh, electric uh, vehicle manufacturing company announced a $2.8 billion investment uh, in the next uh, one or two years um, in, uh, in Canada uh, to basically revamp their production facilities um, to make sure that they're ready uh, for the uh, EV boom uh, that the Canadian market is, is seeing. Again, it's, it's a big market. There's a lot of supply chain. Uh, the fact that Magna, uh, for example, is headquartered in, in Ontario, uh, um, along with some of the other um, tier one, tier two providers um, is, uh, is a testament to that um, infrastructure and, and, and industry. So there's a lot of export opportunities, um, obviously for uh, Floridians in this market as well, uh, in, this, um, in the automotive sector. Um, as you can see, um, it uh, ranges from um, gearboxes, axles, uh, to motor vehicle parts um, that uh, would be needed by these companies. Um, so um, it, it's, again, it's very important to um, take note of the, um, the success of the automotive sector sector in Canada, um, along uh, with the infrastructure and the assistance that the government is putting into and the funding that the government is putting into it. Um, there's, uh, these are the main uh, trade shows that are um, usually take place in, in Canada. Um, again, the um, 
Montreal Electric Vehicle Show. Uh, I've attended it several times. It's a very um, uh, sort of um, diverse uh, show to to attend. Um, again, uh, the Canadian government is putting a lot of emphasis on moving towards um, net zero um, and making sure that um, you know there's a lot of electric vehicles available for the consumers. Um, so. Not only that, but also production of um, batteries um, in in Canada as well. Um, there's uh, investments uh, going into uh, battery production, um, and as well as having um, charging stations. Uh, so again, it's um, it's important to attend. Um, there's the uh, Montreal International Auto Show. Um, again, it's a, it's a big venue, um, as well as the automotive parts uh, manufacturers. Um, exhibition, which uh, takes place in in Windsor, which is not too far from uh, Toronto. Um, so, again, it, it, these are these are all important um, shows to attend, um, mainly to to know who are the key players in Canada, at least in the automotive sector or aerospace sector, um, to basically make that introduction, to meet those. Um, suppliers, to meet those OEMs, um, to meet those partners uh, in the uh, Canadian market, uh, which could open doors for uh, Floridian businesses. Um, I mentioned um, the uh, electric vehicle uh, industry. Um, so these are um, some of the uh, federal and local incentives that the government um, has put in place uh, to make sure that um, this subsector um, is uh, attended to. So, uh, for example, the uh, Strategic Innovation Fund, uh, as well as the Net Zero uh, Accelerator Fund, um, combined, they allocate roughly about $8 billion uh, in a span of uh, approximately seven years to um, make sure that there's an expedition in decarbonization uh, projects with uh, large emitters, um, scale up uh, clean technology, and um, mainly to accelerate Canada's uh, industrial transformation. Um, this is, uh, there's also additional support for uh, innovative projects, green tech, anything um, uh, that, that relates to, to that subsector um, in the automotive and electric vehicle manufacturing sector. Um, and the funding is approximately another billion dollars, uh, Canadian uh, uh, dollars um, that the government is, is putting forward. Um, these are on cash basis. Uh, these are to support private sector investments in, in clean tech projects. Um, the, um, the scientific research um, and experimental development. Um, it provides uh, income tax credits and refunds for capital expenditure made for R&D activity in Canada. So if you come up here and start doing that R&D work, uh, then the government will, uh, will allocate those funds to you. Uh, obviously, you know, they'll, they'll sit down and, and study the scope of the project. Um, and then um, once you put forward uh, an application, then you're accepted. Um, the accelerated capital cost allowance, uh, it's, it lets businesses to write off a, almost 100% of the costs of machinery, equipment um, that is used in uh, the process of manufacturing goods uh, and production of uh, renewable and, and green tech energy. Um, and then lastly, again, uh, the fact that uh, North America's largest lithium ion battery recycling plant is currently under construction um, by uh, a Canadian company um, is also, again, a, a testament to the importance of this uh, subsector in the automotive sector um, and, and where the Canadian um, economy and shift is, is moving towards. Um, another important um, sector um, in, in Canada is the uh, life sciences. Um, with uh, all of its uh, subsectors and categories, uh, um, first and foremost, biopharmaceuticals and, and pharmaceutical production. So um, as you can see here, uh, Canada is the, the ninth largest um, market for pharmaceuticals um, in, um, in the world. Um, and recently, for example, Moderna um, announced uh, the uh, start of a uh, COVID uh, manufacturing plant in Montreal, um, which will take place uh, between this year and, and next. It will be completed. Um, and just in terms of the supply chain and then uh, the suppliers for those um, major OEMs. Um, 
And it also imports a lot of pharma products. Um, as you can see, it, it, it went up um, in uh, sort of the nine, 10 years between 2011, 2020. Um, and again, uh, obviously in this sector as well, um, US is the main trading partner uh, for these uh, types of uh, imports. Um, the next uh, subsector is medical devices. Um, so again, um, it's an important uh, subsector. It's um, roughly 80% uh, of the medical device market um, in Canada is from imported products. Um, and uh, it, the, the, the market itself is sort of estimated to be at around uh, seven and a half, eight billion dollars um, as of uh, 2020. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's going up. Um, again, uh, the fact that we saw, um, you know, with regards to the shortage of, of vaccines, PPE uh, products in uh, Canada, um, the Canadian government uh, made a decision to make sure that uh, these types of products um, are actually manufactured in Canada rather than imported uh, so that Canada can be um, self-sufficient um, and, and serve the market. Uh, this is an important map, uh, again, um, in terms of where uh, the important centers of excellence are located um, in Canada. Um, again, as you can see, there are several um, in uh, and around uh, Quebec and uh, Ontario um, and uh, BC. BC is actually uh, British Columbia and, and Vancouver. It, it actually represents one of the, the main uh, regions in Canada where there's a lot of pharma uh, and medical device manufacturing taking place. Um, so um, again, it's good to know where the clusters are and if you're looking to be basing yourself out of the, you know, in, in near proximity to these uh, OEMs, uh, producers, uh, supply chain um, networks, then uh, at least you can identify uh, those uh, clusters. As with the other um, two sectors, um, the life sciences sector does uh, represent um, great uh, opportunities um, for um, export. Um, as you can see, some of the, uh, the products uh, that um, are, are imported are uh, dental equipment, prosthetics, um, um, and uh, it's also um, one of the pain points uh, of Canada is um, digital health. So um, healthcare providers are seeking solutions to basically streamline uh, healthcare operations here in Canada, um, especially um, with regards to anything that has to do with uh, scheduling, medical billing, um, and uh, virtual care. Um, so U.S. suppliers that are interested in trading in Canada can basically refer to um, individual promises. Sam, you went mute again. I think you might need to plug in your headphone. Uh, can you hear me there now? There we go. Yep, yeah, okay, works. I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Um, so um, again, um, as I mentioned, um, the, uh, the, the US suppliers that are interested in, in uh, trading with Canadians um, and individual uh, Canadians uh, provinces um, can basically just refer directly to uh, these provinces tendering websites, put forward tenders, um, and then uh, acquire information with regards to um, procurement opportunities uh, available in each individual province. Um, and uh, overall, the healthcare system in Canada um, uses uh, various uh, competitive uh, tendering processes um, for the procurement of medical device and, and equipment. Um, and um, if a uh, U.S. Uh, medtech uh, manufacturer uh, has FDA clearance, um, then it just makes it easier and faster for them um, to uh, transition um, and uh, sell into the, uh, the Canadian market. Um, last um, main industry sector is uh, iTech. Um, so this, uh, it's, it's a broad, but, um, industry sector with a lot of subsectors. Um, again, it, it uh, incorporates anything from, um, for example, I, under ICT manufacturing, it incorporates computer and peripheral equipment, hardware, um, communication equipment, um, electrical components, um, anything that has to do with 
audio video equipment uh, and then uh, mag magnetic and uh, optical media um, in terms of software and, and computer services um, there's uh, a lot of software developers, data processing, um, electronic and, and precision equipment uh, with regards to re repair and maintenance, um, and then uh, computer system design. Um, and Montreal and Toronto are basically the hubs for software development, um, AR, VR, um, in Canada. Um, and again, the, we're seeing a lot of international companies recruiting um, their workforce out of these two uh, main um, regions um, because one, uh, for example, for a U.S. company, um, it's much cheaper to hire uh, a Canadian software developer um, and also um, the availability of talent pool in both Toronto and, and Montreal um, is an important factor. Um, under um, ICT wholesales, um, basically anything that has to do with computer, uh, peripherals, uh, prepackaged software um, for merchant wholesalers, uh, electronic components, as I mentioned, um, and then navigation and communicational equipment. And lastly, um, communication services, it includes uh, sub sectors such as uh, wireless telecom uh, carriers um, or wired uh, telecommunication carriers, as well as cable and uh, program uh, distributors. went to one over there we go um, again um, as you can see here the uh, the division um, of the um, of the sector uh, and its subsector uh, contributors um, under the uh, iTech um, division and umbrella um, so uh, you know again don't, no need to take notes that the, the slides will be shared with you just as a reference. Now, um, in, in terms of ICT manufacturing, um, there's a lot of semiconductor and electronic uh, manufacturing. Um, again, just with regards to the uh, pandemic, there was a dip, but uh, it's going up again. Um, communication equipment uh, manufacturing did have a decline um, within the same time period. Um, but um, as the economy is picking itself up in Canada, um, there will uh, there will be more opportunities opening up in both um, semiconductor um, production as well as communication equipment. Um, there's obviously Canada is its own market, um, although um, given the ease of, of doing business between U.S. and Canada, there are uh, nuances that, that uh, U.S. companies and Floridian companies have to take into consideration. Um, it's a different media landscape. Um, there's um, a lot of work is needed on uh, basically on the ground representation, um, regionalized uh, representation. Um, as you're uh, well aware, um, Canada is a bilingual uh, country, uh, English and French. So Quebec itself is um, its own sort of country. Um, you will need to do a lot of research and um, market development in Quebec um, as opposed to other regions in uh, in Canada. So, uh, you know, that's why it's important to understand those um, cultural nuances um, that are specific to, to Canada. Um, you need to have uh, re regional representations in um, sort of East Coast and West Coast. Again, I, as I mentioned, it's a vast country, um, but given that it's basically pockets of population in between Ontario, Quebec, and then BC, um, you will need to um, have those uh, regional uh, reps to cover the territories. Um, it's, it's hard to cover um, West Coast Canada from Ontario or Quebec. And, and even uh, if you're in, in Ontario, a lot of times it's hard to cover um, the surrounding provinces. Um, each uh, province, especially Quebec, um, have their own uh, unique rules, have their own regulations, language requirements um, for branding, um, uh, especially, um, for example, fonts and which language comes first on top, which one comes on bottom, the size of the fonts, etc. So, um, and, you know, these are, these are the, the, the challenges that um, U.S. companies face when they enter the uh, the Canadian market, uh, but again, not to worry because over the years we've built uh, great relationships here with um, partners that are basically 
be there to provide those services, to provide information, both on the public and the private side. Um, so when we have a Floridian company uh, looking at understanding these uh, differences and, and uh, regulations, we basically refer them to the right partners who will walk through the whole uh, step from um, import the products to custom clearance uh, to uh, basically how to brand the product uh, and put them on the shelves. Um, there's an important um, component, um, the, the non-resident importer um, basically it allows, um, it's provided by the Canadian government, uh, it allows US companies um, selling into Canada directly um, to benefit from um, what a, a Canadian company would, would benefit from. So it, it basically becomes, uh, that transaction becomes a local uh, domestic uh, transaction. Um, the, uh, the program basically, as you can see here, it allows for um, shipping and, and custom clearance, um, you know, the uh, delivery of tax uh, and, and shipping handling fees um, directly to the consumer. Um, it also uh, improves that, that uh, flow of uh, goods uh, across the border into um, Canada. Um, and uh, again, on top of the USMCA, you, uh, you have this as well. Uh, that the Canadian company, uh, government is, is providing uh, to U.S. Uh, exporters. Um, these are some of the other services that are provided to um, uh, U.S. Um, exporters to uh, Canada um, under NRA uh, and some of the other uh, programs, um, again, uh, as well as uh, USMCA. Um, it, it basically helps in uh, that smooth um, import of products, uh, goods and services into Canada by US companies. Um, you're provided with a Canadian business number. Um, customs clearance um, takes um, less amount of time and is more efficient. Um, and then um, again, uh, just with regards to taxes and duties, um, it reduces a lot of the uh, hurdles uh, that a uh, US company would face. And by all means, um, I understand, obviously, these are a lot of jargons and, and, and uh, you know, regulations, et cetera. So um, that's why we're here. Um, please feel free to, to reach out to uh, myself, the local field offices in Florida, so that we can provide you further information uh, pertaining to your specific industry sector. Um, oh, sorry. I'll go back. Um, I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Madison. Uh, that, that's basically it from my part. No, oh, that was great. Thank you so much. Um, I will, rem I know we have a couple questions uh, in the chat or the Q&A box. So now that Hassam has gone over his portion of the presentation, feel free to put your questions into that Q&A box. We will get to that very shortly. Um, I will just go into some of the ways we can implement um, you helping you export into Canada. So as I mentioned before, our international services focus on both that inward and outward investment. Um, this purpose of this webinar is more so for that trade purposes. Um, some of the ways we do that in helping our, our Florida companies export. So there are regional managers located throughout the state of Florida. So whatever area you are in, um, you will have a regional manager who can be your go-to person when it comes to our trade grant programs, what events do we have coming up, connections to our international offices. If you don't already know who your regional manager is, please let me know and I'm happy to put you in touch with them. As I mentioned before, I'm the regional manager for the Tampa Bay area. Um, something I did wanna mention on this slide is our newsletter. If you're not already signed up for that, I highly recommend getting signed up for it and I'm happy to sign you up after this webinar. You'll get that once a month with a list of all upcoming events, whether they're Enterprise Florida specific events or some of our partner trade events. So it could be trade missions, trade shows, webinars such as this one, educational events, all sorts of things. Um, the rest of the bubbles on this slide here are other ways we can assist. So like we mentioned, we have our network of international offices. If there's market research you need some assistance with, um, finding statistics overseas, happy to help with that. We have various events throughout the year, whether it's an international trade show, um, a trade mission. We did just uh, finish up a trade mission from Ecuador, our first in-person one since the pandemic first hit us. It was very successful. Um, and we're going over to Egypt here in less than two weeks. Um, and we just announced another trade mission to Panama, which will be in September. So if anyone's interested in that Panama mission, please let us know. 
Um, I am going to skip on over to our actual trade programs and grants specifically. So this first one is our matchmaking program. So matchmaking can either be virtual or in person, as you can imagine when the pandemic first hit us, uh, we had to go right into that virtual uh, matchmaking program. So what that is, is if you have a specific country in mind, say it's Canada, and you need introductions to distributors or buyers or a potential partner in that market, um, either our international offices can assist you with the U.S. Department of Com Commerce or another trusted partner can help basically look at your product, help determine if there's good potential for you in the market, and then set you up with meetings, whether they're uh, on Teams call or you could be traveling to that country and doing an in-person service called a gold key. That's what that matchmaking program is. Um, and there are grants associated with matchmaking, which will reimburse you for the actual matchmaking fee, whether it is in-person or virtual. When you are going on an enterprise for a trade mission, uh, that's what that matchmaking is. It's that gold key. So you're traveling there in person and having meetings with distributors or buyers in that market. International trade shows. So we do have floored pavilions at several um, international shows overseas in some of our target industries. You'll see here, this is a picture from Arab Health, which is a huge life science show in Dubai every year. We have a large Florida pavilion there. Um, here are some examples of other shows. We'll go to air shows. I know we're having a delegation go to Farnborough Air Show this year um, and all sorts of shows. The grant associated with that program will actually reimburse eligible Florida companies um, 75% of the cost of their booth registration um, and furnishings up to $7,500. So if that is something that your business partakes in, you are exhibit at shows that take place overseas, um, we can help you with that. The next thing is our expert marketing plan. So this is a plan that I always like to recommend to companies who aren't sure where to start. They know they wanna get into exporting, they have the capacity to export, um, but they need some uh, preliminary research as to what markets should they look at. Are there events they should look at or are there gonna be regulations they need to uh, consider before they start exporting? It is a program that we uh, partner with the SBDC on. So the SBDC in your region will actually help you um, do all sorts of this research. They'll provide you a large document after they do the research on your product or service. So at the end, you have a presentation and can try to narrow your focus when you are looking to become an exporter. There's also a grant associated with that program. Um, that program is $5,000. And if you are an eligible Florida company, you'll get a grant for $4,500. Then we have our international registration fee. So some companies need to register their product. Uh, they need a CE mark or they need a visa to go into Brazil. We do have an international registry, registration fee grant that will help reimburse your cost of the application um, up to 50% or 50% of the cost of the application up to $10,000. So if there is an international registration that you need for your product or service, I definitely recommend reaching out to your regional manager and we can help you figure out if you'll be eligible for that grant. Um, the last uh, program that is associated with the grant is website localization. This is really great for companies who get a lot of traction online for their business. The website localization program, it localizes your current US-based website and kind of targets it at another culture. So say you're doing a lot of business um, with Canada and you need a French-based uh, Canadian English website. They'll actually localize your website, they'll localize the SEO, make sure all the pictures are culturally appropriate uh, to that market. Um, and that is a really, really great program. We partner with uh, IBT Online, who does the whole website and digital marketing for you. That program is $12,000. And if you are eligible, you will get an $8,000 grant. Last is our certificate of free sale program. So a lot of companies do need a certificate of free sale in order to ship their food or drug type product overseas. That's something we can do for you digitally or get that um, certificate uh, mailed to you. Now, for the grants that I mentioned, they, it is only applicable to eligible Florida companies. So what the main requirements are is you do have to be a small to medium-sized business, so less than 500 employees. Your product or service has to be done in the state. So if you're a manufacturer in Florida, that's great. If you're a distributor, but you might be moving goods that are coming out of another state or another country, that probably would not make you eligible. Um, we also require you to have a physical office or warehouse or even co-working address in order to qualify for these grants. You can qualify or use three uh, trade grants per fiscal year. Some of them are, are you can only use one per lifetime or one per year. So again, that's something we'd be happy to discuss for you once the time comes. But our fiscal year is actually ending soon. Here it ends June 30th and starts July 1. So at the start of that new year, you're eligible for three of those trade grants and you can mix and match them. So say you are exhibiting at two new trade shows 
uh, and you want to do one matchmaking program with our Canada office, you can use grants for all three of those. Um, and if you have any questions on those, happy to answer those in the Q&A box. Um, we'll get to questions shortly, so put your questions in. I did just want to mention our next webinar in the series is Asia Pacific. This one will be a regional webinar. It won't just be one specific country. Um, it will be with our director of our Asia Pacific office who is based uh, out of Singapore. We will have speakers from Hong Kong, Indonesia, um, and we are also gonna have guest speakers from the Department of Commerce in Thailand and the Philippines as well. So if that's a market of interest to you, highly recommend tuning into that one. Now, we are going to get into my favorite part, the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. I'm opening it up now. All right, Hassam, so you have your first question. Is there a market for healthy snacks uh, and foods in Canada? Indeed. Uh, yeah, I was actually just going over the, the question and I saw um, you know, that that's a great question. Yes, uh, the, the Canadian market is is uh, ripe uh, for these types of products, uh, healthy food. So, um, and um, as, as Madison mentioned, um, that virtual business matchmaking program, that's actually a very successful program. Um, at least I'd like to think so uh, for the Canadian market. Um, it basically has allowed, um, so we've worked uh, with at least three or four different Floridian businesses that have um, you know, signed up uh, onto the VBM uh, program where we basically provided them um, direct uh, introductions to major distributors um, and major clients in Canada. Um, one of the companies that we um, actually just recently um, on onboarded into that program is in the healthy food industry sector. And we're seeing a lot of um, interest from Canadian companies to uh, import and distribute these types of uh, food products from the U.S. specifically um, to uh, different um, Canadian provinces. So yes, indeed, there is, there's an appetite for it. There's a, there's a market for these types of products. Um, and um, again, um, as Madison said, um, that that VBM program makes it much more easier because um, you know you're basically we introduce you directly to the company, um, we qualify the company's interest, and then uh, you sit down with them and go over you know what you're looking to do. Are they you know are you looking to have them be your distributor in a certain part of Canada? Um, you sort of uh, you know, have an exclusivity, etc. Um, and in a lot of cases, has it has led to uh, growing. Uh, trade um, by that Floridian company um, just going through this this VBM program. Um, and again, this is something I, I wanted to also add is um, I usually um, advise people to do that uh, export marketing plan before they undertake the VBM program because um, when you do that export marketing plan, um, we sit down with you and then, um, you know, my, my great colleagues like Madison uh, and the other uh, team members in uh, field offices go over the main markets that you should focus on. And then once you have that, then you basically sign up for a VBM program targeted to Canada or Mexico or Europe, et cetera. Um, so that's why it's, it's um, you know, it's a great sort of uh, one, two step. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hassam. I'm going to keep it on the food subject and ask if you could touch on some of the labeling requirements for food products. Absolutely. Um, it's tedious, uh, to say the least. Um, so, for example, uh, in Quebec, um, the font, um, the French language font on the uh, on, on the product itself, especially food products, it has to be a, a certain percentage bigger than the English font. Um, all of the products have to be uh, the ingredients have to be included in both French and English. Um, and uh, especially in Quebec, if um, that uh, font size and then and, and that branding is not adhered to, the government will easily uh, yank the products off the shelves uh, regardless. Um, so and this this happens to Canadian companies selling in Quebec, let alone in national products. Um, so that's why that, that labeling requirement is very strict uh, and very important to uh, adhere to. That's very helpful. Thank you. Um, one question about COVID. How is the current COVID situation in Canada and is it still affecting business as usual? Uh, less so. Uh, a great question. Um, so we're just coming off um, the most uh, stringent um, COVID lockdowns. So um, as of now, um, 
um, for example, international travel, um, there's no more requirements um, of having um, a, uh, a COVID uh, test um, 72 hours of work, uh, et cetera. You can just do uh, come into Canada with a rapid antigen uh, negative test, um, especially if you're um, double vax. Um, in terms of businesses, um, everyone's opening up. Uh, so now, obviously, a lot of businesses are doing the hybrid model of uh, several days in the office and then several days remotely. Um, all of the main venues and events have opened up. Mass restrictions have been lifted. Um, so uh, previous to April, um, everyone was supposed to wear masks in public um, regardless. Um, but now that restriction has lifted. Um, even though there's sort of talks about another wave, um, especially in, in Quebec and, and Ontario, uh, the most populous provinces in, in, in uh, Canada, um, both provincial governments are hesitant to move towards that uh, restriction. So um, we're seeing an easing um, of those restrictions. Um, it's sort of dying down with regards to the requirements. Um, nevertheless, it's still there, um, but um, I would say it's it's very much so less stringent as it was um, previous to April. Great, thank you. Next question: Could you talk a little bit about the market for renewable energy and environmental technologies? Absolutely, great question. Um, a very good uh, market economy sector um, here in Canada. There's a lot of renewable energy companies um, uh, here in Canada, um, both on the uh, wind and solar um, uh, sort of uh, production. Um, it's also um, another subsector is, for example, wastewater management. Um, the um, I've had a chance to meet with um, the McMaster University, which is at the forefront um, of studying wastewater management, um, environmental technologies um, here in in Ontario. Um, and um, there's a lot of uh, room for growth, uh, a lot of room for investment and, and trade opportunities. Um, so yes, um, by, by all means, I would say that's also a, a great uh, sector to, to focus on. That is lovely. Um, I have two related questions um, about supplements. So one company asked about opportunities for probiotic or prebiotic products. And someone else mentioned um, they're a supplement company based here looking for distributors that could handle these products. Could you speak a little bit about maybe the nutraceutical market over there? Yeah, uh, indeed. Um, we've, We've worked with a, a bio uh, company, um, again, under the same VVM program, um, and uh, it was very successful for that company. Uh, the, uh, the contacts and the, uh, the interest we generated um, for the company. Um, so yes, uh, I would say um, it's, it's definitely a, a ripe market for supplements, uh, you know, uh, bio products, et cetera. Um, and again, obviously I'm not an expert uh, by any means, but um, again, we can sit down and, and see what the product is and um, what the opportunities would be and whom we would suggest you go after uh, in terms of uh, distributors, uh, at least in, in the main um, uh, metropolitan areas. Fantastic. So that would be a good one if your company interested in that VBM program, Hassam can do some research for you and see if that uh, matchmaking would be a good fit. Um, Andrew McIntosh did mention no antigen test is required to enter Canada now, only proof of vaccination. So that's exciting. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see what else we have. Are there any stigmas against Florida companies that maybe we should be aware of or no? Not at all. Um, not at all. It's no surprise that... Um, Canada is the second most important uh, trading partner for Florida. Um, uh, Canadians have an affinity uh, for Florida, um, even though it's not uh, one of the states that border Canada. Um, there's, uh, again, there's, there's 500,000 Canadians that travel to uh, Florida. So um, whoever's doing business in Florida as a Canadian has been there several times, um, at least as a tourist. Um, again, uh, Canada and Canadian companies have actually hired about 50, 60,000 Floridians. So that affinity is, is very strong. Um, there's no stigma in terms of um, uh, Florida. And actually something that we noticed um, just within the last six, nine months was 
how um, open Canadian companies were in relocating or uh, expanding to Florida just because of the open for business uh, policy that the state has had. Wow. Okay. That's great to know. Um, new question. What are some of the more common commodities slash goods uh, that are exported from Canada? Uh, that's a very good question. I would have to get back to them on that um, without uh, shooting myself in the foot. Um, I can <laughs> get a list of, of the main products. Um, whatever that was not mentioned on the uh, slides that we went over here, um, I can do a deep dive um, and go specifically over what sort of subsectors they're looking at. Um, yeah. Perfect. Um, we can always get you more information. Uh, and it's, what, it's, it's free as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, another question. I know you touched um, on Quebec, but what are some of the other geographical challenges given Canada's vastness? Um, I know you touched base on it quite a bit, but is there anything else you'd like to add when it comes to distribution or different pockets? Yes, indeed. Um, you definitely need to have a distribution logistics center uh, for East Coast and West Coast. Um, uh, again, if you're looking to distribute your products um, all over Canada, you need regional uh, distributor centers. Um, it's, it's going to be too costly to send your products from Toronto to Vancouver. Um, if you don't have anything on the West Coast. Um, and, and again, I, I don't want to alienate the, uh, the, the mid, mid parts of Canada. Those are great pockets, uh, Calgary, et cetera, where there's a lot of engineering, oil, uh, petrochemical um, industry sectors are, are based there, uh, mining as well. Um, again, you will need to have those uh, regional representations and regional distributions. Very good to know. Um... What areas of technology in Canada are seeking or are open to international cooperation, um, such as joint venture partnerships, startup investment funding? Uh, do you have any insight on that? Um, I would say fintech, um, cryptocurrency, cybersecurity. Um, these are um, top of mind. Um, it's and also, um, for example, so Montreal and Toronto are working in developing the infrastructure. Um, for crypto um, and and um, fintech, um, there's again it, it, both both in Montreal and and Toronto. There's there's um, we're seeing a a lot of startups in these main industry sectors, um, especially digital health. Health, as I mentioned before as well, it's something that the government needs. And for example, so Ontario is revamping its, its healthcare system. Um, and obviously with the, uh, the pandemic and, and the need for virtual uh, visitations, um, digital health has, has come uh, to the forefront. Um, besides those, again, like I said, um, cybersecurity is a, is a big um, sector. Uh, there's a lot of uh, good companies um, active in, uh, in the market, um, but uh, there's still room um, for uh, a U.S. company uh, to, uh, to, to take a, a big market share. Perfect. Um, God, okay, we got one more comment in the Q&A box, but we will definitely get back to you on that. Um, if there are no more questions, we are right at about three o'clock. Oh, no, I just, I, as soon as I refresh, um, is there any opportunity to sell directly to retail store or do you recommend using a local distributor? Um, no, there's no, there's no requirement to go through a distributor. Um, it's just that it's harder to sell to uh, the retail stores. Um, a lot of times retail stores work with distributors. They don't buy anything directly, right? So um, that's why it's good to at least have that distributor, um, especially in the uh, onset of, of uh, entering the market. Nevertheless, it's not it's not a requirement. We actually have had um, several big uh, retailers that have stated interest in, in purchasing um, goods from uh, Floridians directly. That is also great to know. Um, now we really are at the top of the hour. So I am going to let you go, Hassan, but thank you all so much for joining. We really appreciate it. Feel free to join us for any of our upcoming webinars. Um, you'll be able to see the calendar at florida-export.com. Um, and I'm adding new ones pretty much every week for different regions that you might be interested in. Again, this webinar will be recorded and posted on our uh, YouTube page as well as the florida-export website.
Um, and if you need any information, you have my contact and Hassam's contact information on the screen right now, but look for that in the recording as well. Thank you so much, Hassam, for all of this wonderful information. And thank you so much, Lynn, our VP of IT. Thank you.